my presentation following very nicely on the points that were just made is entitled Justice for Authors, What Role Can Europe Play? And uh, I think that for most of us here, when we saw the digital single market uh, come onto the agenda, we were very excited and felt very positive because copyright reform clearly is something that is needed. Unfortunately, though, when you have a closer look at the digital single market agenda as it has been articulated so far, some key factors appear to be curiously missing from it, uh, including, for example, culture. Or how about authors? Where is the mention of authors in the digital single market agenda? So a question we might find ourselves wondering about is, do we in fact need a fourth pillar for the new strategy, in addition to the three that have been identified so far by the European Commission? In fact, if we look at some of the communications coming from the European Com Commission, we can see that certain key factors have been somehow identified or hinted at. There is mention of key words such as creativity, the idea of investment in creative content, the idea that how value is generated from the production and dissemination of works and how it is shared above all by market participants is important. We also see some discussion of a concern that the rules of copyright law should continue to meet their objectives. So a plea at some level for rationality and transparency in the copyright policies underlying their legal manifestations. And we see reference not to authors, but to right holders. So the idea that a high level of protection for right holders should be maintained. So given this background currently at play in Europe, how are authors and artists doing? Well, we've heard a little bit about music streaming and the Spotify situation in particular. Uh, we all know about copyright infringement. Copyright versus copyleft is another major discussion that has been going on for a while. Copyleft awakens a lot of enthusiasm, but we have to remember that that is not a framework for remunerating authors or people who create creative works. So I've left myself the first point on this slide, which is to talk a little bit about writers in particular, writers' earnings in the context of Canada as well as the UK, a representative European jurisdiction. Why Canada? Well, because there's some very recent information in the form of a report from the Writers' Union of Canada with an intriguing title. It's called Devaluing Creators, Endangering Creativity. And the subtitle is Doing More and Earning Less writers' incomes today. Here are a few quotes from the report. They say the work of writers fuels an almost $2 billion industry, and yet more than 80% of those writers earn an income from their writing that is below the poverty line. The median net income from writing was less than $5,000, while the average income from writing was 12,879 Canadian dollars. Writers' writing incomes are far behind the average salary in the information and cultural industries at 60,011 Canadian dollars, a sector built upon the work of creators. And the study uh, upon which these uh, figures are drawn had about 947 author participants who responded. In the UK, a recent report as well from 2014 found similar figures. Uh, the median income of the professional author in 2013 was 11,000 uh, pounds, significantly reduced even since 2005. And they note that that figure is well below 16,850 pounds, which is what is considered to be necessary to achieve a minimum standard of living. The typical median income of all writers, they say, was even less, 4,000 pounds in 2013, compared to 5,012 in real terms in 2005 and 8,810 in 2000. And for this study, they drew upon a sample of 2,500 writers. So these figures and the figures that you've heard from my co-panelists point to a reality <laughs> that involves a significant human cost. That cost can be described in stark terms. It involves poverty, personal sacrifice on the part of people who want to create, a strong disincentives to create, even at times an impossibility of doing so given the economic scenario, and ultimately lack of social status, disrespect. 
And the social cost, in a sense, is even more stark, because at some level, if we have no authors, we have no culture. So where do we go from here, given this stark reality? How do we articulate some policy that can move us forward towards a more positive future? I think that one important factor to consider here is to think about our shared social priorities. In our field, copyright law, we talk a lot about copyright wars, and we tend to forget that, in fact, where copyright is concerned, there are significant shared interests and even common spaces. Authors and owners clearly have shared interests in the controlled dissemination of creative works with shared benefits for both parties. Authors and the public also have shared interests. In fact, their primary shared interest lies in dissemination, which again has shared benefits for both parties. And finally, let's go further into the relationship between authors and the public and perhaps state the most important point of all, that they have a shared interest in maintaining the integrity and vitality of the cultural sphere. So given all of this, what might be an agenda for authorship here in the current European scenario? How can Europe help? Well, what do we have in Europe that is unique in the world, that is important in the world? We have cultural wealth, heritage, a sense of cultural identity, and a long tradition of culture as a priority. Perhaps these can lead us towards a broader understanding of what we mean when we talk about harmonization in the copyright context, or perhaps, in even simpler terms, harmony. There is a tradition of human rights in Europe, which is highly developed, both in terms of the legal framework and the cultural background to the concept of human rights. And last but not least, Europe has global market clout. What happens in Europe can and will influence what happens everywhere. A few key policy objectives that might help to define a positive agenda for authorship could look like what I've pictured on this slide here. Some attention to contracts, some respect for moral rights of authors and artists, so the right to be attributed as the author of your own work and the right to protect the integrity of work that you've created. The development of better relations between authors and collecting or collective societies. Adapting to change and help in that process of adaptation. And of course, once again, the idea of a shared commonality of interests. Policy development based on a vision of shared interests and leadership in that sense. When we speak about contracts, the fundamental issue that we confront is one of tremendous inequality of bargaining power. And it's encouraging that we've seen at least two jurisdictions in Europe attempting to address that through specific focused legislation, Germany and the Netherlands. This is something that we could see developing at a Europe-wide level. We could attempt to eliminate the practice of blanket waivers of authors' moral rights in copyright contracts. And we could eliminate the idea of super copyright because respecting copyright limitations ultimately helps both authors and the public by building positive relations between the two. In terms of moral rights, we've now reached a point where every European jurisdiction has some basic recognition for moral rights within its legislative framework for copyright law. What about the next step, which is to ensure their practical recognition in all EU member countries? Could European harmonization of moral rights be an agenda item to move forward under the digital single market? And of course, transparency, again, a point that's been raised by my fellow panelists. Transparency of practices at copyright collecting societies, furthering the work of the existing directive in this area, and primacy given to the principle of revenue sharing. And let's not forget authorial entrepreneurship, because the landscape has changed, and adaptation to these technological changes is a reality of life no matter what the future of copyright holds. Let's have favorable rules for investment in the creative sector and for encouraging authors and artists to develop their own entrepreneurship. Let's help to educate authors about the possibilities of entrepreneurship, especially if they want that education. As far as harmonization is concerned, 
It can move us forward by helping to establish a united front to contend with a global marketplace where culture is concerned. It can favor the creation and dissemination of European cultural works and products both within and beyond European borders. The goal would be to draw upon Europe's traditional wealth to build a European and global market for European goods and ideas. And of course, encourage the principle of respect for the human rights of authors and artists. It's good for society and, I must say it, for the economy too. Dare we hope, the future must be different from the past. Thank you very much.